Hey guys, we're here at Freeplay Arlington and we're playing one of the rarest arcade games in the entire world. We're about to play Enigma 2. When Space Invaders, Pac-Man, and Asteroids proved that a massive market for arcade video games existed, just about every coin-op business, no matter the size, made immediate plans to rush into the video arcade market. This included the minor pinball manufacturer, Game Plan Inc. Game Plan Inc. has a relatively sordid and still mostly shrouded history, but this is what we know. In 1978, Wendell McAdams, an amusement industry vet from Chicago Coin, was brought in to run the new pinball division of AES Manufacturing a slot machine manufacturer in Illinois run by Lee Goldboss. Within a few months, this division was manufacturing small, primarily home-use cocktail pinball tables under the name Game Plan Incorporated. By early 1980, AES had a reasonably large manufacturing facility and was achieving some success in the pinball market. Hoping to leverage its manufacturing capacity into video arcade riches, AES tasked its pinball division, Game Plan, into releasing a video arcade game within three months. Without a speck of video programming talent on its staff, Game Plan purportedly sent a young executive to Japan with a plan to discover the next Pac-Man. So what does a young exec seeking the next pack do? Head to the Pac-Man developer Namco, of course. And legend has it that the executive was actually able to get a meeting in Namco and even was given a preview of some of Namco's upcoming releases, including Galaga, which though Midway had published Galaxian in the United States, was not yet bound to any publisher. The game plan exec, however, was enamored with a different game, King and Balloon. Using digitized speech and double the processing power of Galaxian, King and Balloon was nearly ready to ship and featured a totally unique and awesome twist on the shooter gameplay. After inking that deal and spending nearly all of the available game plan resources, the exec went around Tokyo searching for another developer that could provide game plan with quality games without the massive damn fees. Enter Taiyo System, a small but robust game development company that had made extreme advances working on the relatively inexpensive Space Invader style arcade hardware, and was rumored to be working with Nintendo on what would become Donkey Kong. During the visit, the exec saw demos of Taiyo's upcoming releases, including Tora Tora and Intruder. These games, while quite basic, were ready to ship, and Taiyo had an entire lineup of games that were in various stages of development. At what must have been a relatively low price, the exec signed an agreement that provided low licensing fees and gave Game Plan the exclusive United States rights to Taiyo's arcade games. Quickly, Game Plan released Taiyo Systems Tora Tora and Intruder to the market, where Tora Tora found some success and was a minor hit. Altering the cabinet design slightly in order to maximize production, Game Plan developed a singular arcade cabinet that it would use for each following arcade release, merely changing the paint colors on the side, similar to the strategy employed by Taito at the time. This allowed Game Plan to quickly release Taito's Megatac, Chaos, and Enigma 2, along with Namco's King and Balloon. While Megatac was largely a failure, both Chaos and Enigma 2 found small audiences with their unique gameplay. Enigma 2, which was not a sequel in the slightest, featuring unique enemies and a thrust gameplay mechanic, was one of the most interesting and addictive shooters during the shooter craze of the early 80s. That said, having never had a major arcade hit, Game Plan would not survive the difficult coin-op market of the mid-1980s, and ultimately was taken down by some sort of accounting slash tax mishap that caused its executives to flee the country. Tayo Systems, however, would achieve success in Japan with later release Monster Zero, 
and would then move to focus on simple but successful games on Nintendo systems like the Famicom and the Super Famicom under the name Culture Braid. So with low production numbers, gameplay games are exceedingly rare. In fact, the Enigma 2 at Freeplay Arlington is the only Enigma 2 available to the public to play right now. So if you want to relive a small part of the 1980s arcade market and play an amazing game, you have to head to Freeplay Arlington. Play Arlington.